So I came into my studio tonight and you would not believe what I found. I came in and there was a painting that I did last painting for you guys and there were splashes all across it. And uh, it's a lesson for me to always put my painting away in the map drawers because something has happened and just splashed across and the problem with a watercolour is that it's fragile. Like you, you put it behind glass in a frame for a reason and, and when you haven't done that yet, it, you've got to protect it and, and that was my fault really. I don't know what, what has happened, but I've got a splash of cobalt blue across. I'll show you that. out so as you can see here as I zoom in here I know it's not much but it doesn't take much and maybe you probably can't really see that it's pretty hard probably for it to focus on probably pretty hard for it to focus on those dots but and it went into the splash kind of went into the yellow ochre and then up the wall over here and I'm trying to do a bit of detective work, but I've got no idea how that happened. But this painting now, I really don't know what to do about that because that has uh, stuffed the painting. There's even some over here, there's a little dot over here, you can see, just there. So anyway, uh, you learn your lessons. Uh, this painting I need to do something about to try and maybe keep it as a painting but it will definitely not remain as it is because uh, it's stuffed so these map drawers here is really where i should have yeah so these map drawers here is where i really should have put it in as soon as i was done and not left it up on the on the on the countertop so you learn your lesson so this painting is um uh, a bit stuffed here. There's got there's cobalt blue going all the way across here. There's dots here and here and here. There's even one up here. So I can't uh, leave it like that. Uh, so what to do? So I could I could try and scrape back to white. I could try and do that, but I don't think that would be likely to be great. So. All I'm going to do is just uh, I'll just mix this up and then I'll see you here in a second. And you know sometimes sometimes these paintings that have been ruined by a mistake or by something you know, outside of your control or whatever, sometimes these paintings turn into sometimes these paintings turn into something that you would just never have achieved otherwise. So the good thing is, I know it's completely dry, like really dry. Um, the bad thing is, is that I've scraped back the paper here really strongly. It means any pigment that I put in around here is just going to get soaked right up into that, into that uh, almost like blotting paper there. So I'm going to have to be aware of that and careful of that. If I want to keep some whites, then um, yeah, that's going to be uh, an important thing. Um, my water is still not uh, clean enough, so. You can kind of see here, it's still a bit cloudy. So cloudy water, when I want to maintain some white whites here, is not a great thing. So I'm just going to tip it out again, get some fresh water. That's better. So I'm going to wet the page, but I think what I'm going to do is just wet this section here. Uh, I don't think I'm going to wet that bottom section for now. I might later, I'll see. Alright. Not too many times, of course. And 
so really I don't have much choice other than to go a bit darker and um so let's go there I might as well just go a bit of the color that's um been put on there already but see as you can see it's too dark so I, I, I can't really do that I've got to go darker so really I've got to, to, to get rid of that I've got to go a bit darker and I've got to put down some darkness in the areas that So every time I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to make sure I get fresh water in my brush so I don't go, I want to move that pigment away from that area. Whereas if I just keep picking up pigment, um, and it's handy obviously for me, I've got an area where I can load it up and then flick it out. And that is very handy I have to say. And there comes a point in time where you want to kind of probably stop touching it because you can really kind of overwork this sometimes and 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 even if you can't see it there's going to be pigment on the page here that's going to make it a bit darker and so if I want, the eye is an amazing thing, if I want for it to pick up that there is a bright area there for instance then it's great to use a tissue to just, just take out a bit more there and then the eye will be able to see that, that really bright white. Alright. This might just be a good opportunity for me to again get some just to get a little bit more here. Just to bring a bit across here. Just so we can just bring a little bit of this. Just a bit of the sky colour, because I actually thought this about this painting before that wasn't quite enough of the, the sky colour in the sea. Oh, a pretty good reflection of each other. Mm. Nice, nice. Oh well, a bit more moody now than it was. And it was a pretty moody day, I have to say. So anyway, you, you, you do end up creating something you might not otherwise create. So I think that's, I think I'm happy with that. Yeah. Nice. All right, well, let's move on to the painting I was going to do tonight. set of tweezers and every time I'm getting rid of the hair out of it but not only that I'm making sure I kind of 
get any pigment that happened to get stored in the, in the tweezers. I'm getting rid of that with my fingers because if you go to pick up a hair again somewhere else in a light area, like a light area just here, you want to make sure there's not a huge amount of pigment that suddenly just comes off the tweezers and into the painting. So every time I get a hair off, I, um, I pull it off, but I pull all the pigment off too. Right, let's dry this and see what it looks like. Alright. Alright, I, I think I'm happy with that. Like I said in the last painting, I could potentially just do a solid white line along here if I really wanted to like, make it. A very stylized painting but I like that the horizon disappears in places and then is highlighted here it's uh, you know it's more realistic and it's a, a better painting and there is I don't know if you can see it but there is a very small uh, dot right here but all I would do if I got this framed is I'd just bring it in a, a fraction so that, that disappeared because I don't think that I want to um, do anything about that. And there's, there's a slight little watermark going on up here. So just bring the framing in a very fraction will, will just help that. So I think... Uh... So I suppose what's good to learn about this is that, you know, out of mistakes and things can come a better painting. And if you have a look at the image of the painting as it was before, and then we have a look at the painting now, you can, you know, see it's taken it in a different direction. It's a bit darker, it's a bit moodier, there's other layers. And, um, you know, let me know which one you preferred, but at the end of the day, I couldn't leave the one as it was with a whole streak of cobalt blue across it, so I had to do something. So, you know, I, I, I like the result of this, and, uh, and then you get to try something over the top of it, and that's what's lovely about watercolor, is sometimes it's hard to take a, a risk when you think, oh, I've done a painting now and you start to become protective of it, then one, when something is not quite right, sometimes that leads to a much stronger or better painting because you're willing to take the risk. And taking the risks again and again is what develops you as a watercolorist. So, cool, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. See ya, good night.